Hello, Leisure folks. My name's Jared. My name's Michael. And we are the, the Leisure, Leisure Critics. Leisure Critics, say what? Leisure Critics, oh yeah. So today, guys, we are talking about Superman. It's important to note that we are doing this in semi-unison with our friends over at Ramble On About Movies, coming out of Columbus, Ohio. Friend of our very own Jared. I don't Hi. remember his name. What's his name? Oh, Dan Nye. Dan Nye. Dan Great Nye. guy. Never met him. <laughs> they got to do Batman. We get to do Superman. Only slightly jealous about that fact. Uh, we're also tasting out a little fighting cock, which is surprisingly tasty. Delicious. I'm just gonna jab you out there a little there bit right there. Um, yeah, I didn't give you too much. We've been we we've already finally agreed on a rating system. We've got a firm one to six ranking of the superhuman Superman movies. I'm pretty happy with it. I I, I think you've got some misgivings. I'm semi-satisfied. 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 I'll take that. We'll start off with our number six. Out of six movies, the worst one, we can both agree, is Superman, Superman 4. 4. Quest for Peace. It's really bad, guys. I mean, it's plagued by the same issues that plague any production that is extraordinarily low budget. Yeah. Overuse of green, uh, green screen as well as overuse of stock footage. I'm pretty sure every time you see Superman flying into the camera, it's the exact same shot. It is. Just projected on a different green screen. Um, also, not a lot of cohesion. No. Not a lot of sense. No. Not a lot of quality or logic or anything really good. This is the Spider-Man 3 of the series. This is the... Um, what the fuck did we just do? Yeah, it's it's an abortion put to film. It's yeah. pretty bad. Atrocity. It's so bad that two people with pretty different ideas on how these films should rank both agreed that it yeah. deserved the, fine, the last spot. Immediately agreed. Bottom of the barrel. Uh, so Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. You get Nuclear Man, who is... He basically gets involved in a cat fight with Superman. He's yeah. got long fingernails that like shoot out. Some scratching. There's scratching. Uh, slow motion. Pathetic. Slow, slow motion fight on the moon. Some homoerotic wrestling in sky. Uh, for some reason, people can breathe in space. Uh -huh. Space. I, I don't know why. That was a new one. That was weird. Uh, so that's why it gets our number six. Our number five spot is uh, Man of Steel. I, I was surprised by this. Didn't want to upset a lot of you fanboys out there, but the long and short of it is, Christopher Nolan took far too many liberties for our liking with the Superman franchise. There's a, there's people out there that either love this movie or they hate it. And we hate it. I wasn't crazy about it either. Man of Steel is basically kind of a retelling of the Superman story that you, uh, you probably saw in the original Superman the movie. Yep. Um, Krypton has animals, including dragons as well as spaceships. Telepathic dragons that can sense when their owners are jumping off balconies. And also sacrifice themselves to save their owner. That goes without saying. It's just an emotional device, really, just to commit you more to what's yeah. happening on screen. Uh, people die. A lot of people die. Not only random people you don't know uh, in what I like to call destruction porn, but main characters die, uh, and they accept it with uh, somber grace. Pretty cool about it. Yeah. Didn't really get upset. Or they don't actually die. Russell Crowe dies when Krypton explodes. But then he comes back. He's not really dead. Not at all. He's now just a hologram. Yes. Or a machine. Well, an omnipotent hologram. Kind of one or the other. Yeah. Slash it's, both. It's pretty bad. A lot of Christ imagery. Like Way you do. too much. Also, really poorly defined uh, superpowers. Yeah. Um, when did he learn how to fly? Did it take 10 years for him to, you know, kind of adapt to being on Earth? He had super strength really young as a kid, but he's still struggling on an oil rig to hold back something that should, for Superman, be very, very easy. Yeah. Zod says that it'll take them years to adapt to the atmosphere. He gets his helmet knocked off, and he just kind of thinks about it, and he masters his superpowers. That's uh, that's kind of shoddy storytelling. Lazy, hacky, just poor writing. It's not great. It's not great. A lot of that noise. Also, everything's done in grayscale. Superman's yeah. not supposed to be a bleak superhero. Should be bright, should be happy. Superman's a Boy Scout. He goes on Boy Scout adventures. Yeah. He's the happy one. That's why we hate him. Yeah. S Batman is the dark, angsty one. There's um, a foil system for a reason. Exactly. Uh, our number four spot is Superman Returns. In fact, very true. Very true. Um, 
Again, uh, this movie, well, this movie is good in the fact that it asks the question, what if three and four never really happened? What if Superman had actually seen some of the ramifications? What if the world had been upset for the near total destruction of Metropolis between these alien invaders and this alien hangar outer? I'd be kind of pissed. Lois even turns on him, gets married, has a kid, which you find out is actually his. Because the kid can throw pianos. Lots of them. Yeah, he practices. Um, I think Kevin Spacey is one of the high points of the movie. I think he's a great Lex Luthor. Kevin Spacey does a good job. Uh, my favorite. Uh, he does get a little campy with it, but... I mean, that's what... It's Superman. It's, it's Superman. It's a comic book film. Come if on. we can't be campy, what can we be campy? Yeah, uh, the ending, however, is really one of my biggest issues. Pretty um, ridiculous change there yeah from being completely debilitated by kryptonite to being very able to lift an island built of kryptonite like kryptonite and throw it into space for a while i was like well he's on the bottom you can't see any green so maybe the green's only at the top but then the green starts coming out around him and yeah. then you got to be like well fuck that's kind of stupid our third spot is actually superman 3 superman 3 it ranks in really uh it, it ranks perfectly with its number in the in the number of films a happy coincidence uh, I it, This took a little arguing, uh, if you can watch the unabridged version of this discussion, but I finally concede, Superman 3 is a lot of fun, but again, it is not really a Superman movie. Technically, it's no. A, it's a Richard Pryor film. It is a Richard Pryor comedy film, um, and it's great because it's coming out at the same time where a lot of other great Richard Pryor films are coming out. See No Evil, Hear No Evil. With, that was great. Uh, Gene Wilder. Yeah, and um, you know, it's, it's a... It's just, it's fun. It's hilarious, ridiculous thing happens, and it also gives you a not direct glimpse, but a slight glimpse into one of super he- uh, Superman's big uh, villains, Bizarro. You have a uh, alter ego Superman fighting... Um, oh. oh, yeah, fighting it's kind of like a Bizarro him. Superman. Very, very... That's one of the like best scenes in the movie. Uh, the scene where he gets exposed to uh, lead, uh, lead-heavy uh, kryptonite. A sequence of film that would not be made today, Richard Pryor sees on the computer that the last bit of the kryptonite is unknown. He uh, takes out a cigarette to smoke it. He looks at the contents of cigarettes, which just pretty much says tar, and he goes, oh, fuck it, I'll just write it and put it in tar. I'll just... Tar, my mistake. So everything, 98% kryptonite plus 2% tar, you can split Superman into an alter ego of good and evil Clark Kent will go about doing his business until he finds out that there's this evil Superman. Yeah. An evil Superman, not even that evil. Kind of evil, like though. like a menace. Well, he's really just kind of a dick. Yeah, didn't do anything really, really bad. But he was like, oh man, you're an asshole, Superman. Blew out the Olympic torch. Busted open an oil tanker. Slept with a villain's henchman. That was actually a really great part. Well. the Only, only the second time Superman's ever gotten laid. It's amazing she didn't die. Uh, um, That's a plot hole right there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, right. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, Superman, uh, the next on our list, ranking number two, is the original Superman. Superman 1. Just because it's so long. Very long. It is the first superhero movie ever made. Which gives it a lot of credit. Great score. But two not a, a lot happens. Two and a half hours? Really? Yeah. Come on. Four, I mean, not much. No. The long uh, origin story, um, a nice boring one, a nice true to Superman's legacy origin story, but inconsequential. Yeah. Uh, I think the most important thing they do was introduce Lana Lang and then have him find his uh, ship. Mm-hmm. Most of the other stuff was just kind of not necessary garbage. And the end where he turns the where spins the rotation of the earth the other way and somehow turns back time. Some people don't like that. I don't. Some people are uh, okay with it. Science doesn't support it. Um, I'll tell you that right now. My favorite part about that is that Lois dies. If Briefly. If only for a bit. If only for a moment. If only for a moment. Uh, our number one spot is Superman, Superman 2. 2. The Donner cut for me. Uh, that's really what closed the deal for me. I, I, I thought it was fantastic. It takes Superman to a much darker place. It's a darker tone. Um, and also it's the person that was originally... <laughs> he was originally set up to direct the, the movie. The actual filmmaker. So, like, yeah, this is this is his film the way he wanted it to be. Uh, I, I think it's great. You get three villains for Superman that are... 
equals to him. Well, not not totally. He did no. best them. Yeah, he bests them. But, but I mean, they're the closest thing to equals that Superman has had in any of his movies. Exactly. The ending also pretty wacky. That's a common thread for all of these movies. All wacky. Didn't like the ending for Man of Steel. Didn't like the ending for anything. Didn't like. I, I haven't liked the ending of a Superman movie ever. It's hard to end a superhuman film. Well, Superman's a hard character to write for. He's fucking Superman. Yeah. What do you say about the Man of Steel? Yeah, he's got telekinesis. He can put together the Great Wall of China. He can blow ice out of his breath. He and can... you, you know about him and bullets. Impenetrable. Yeah. Can't leap tall buildings. penetrate Superman. No, he can shoot a miniature Superman out of his palm if you read the comics. Also produced Teflon from his S emblem if you watched Superman 2. X-ray vision. It's a big thing. Yeah, never uses it for evil though. I would be pretty guilty. Just, the Teflon is that the is he? I wrap, imagine wrap? it is Saran wrap or something. Yeah, like, I don't the understand the whole logo off the chest. Remarkable substance. Really strange. Not of this earth. That's the movie equivalent of a miniature <laughs> Superman <laughs> shooting out of his hand. A bunch of Teflon coming out of your emblem. That's weird. Momentarily incapacitating a bad guy. Mildly inconveniencing them, really. Yeah, really. Just kind of an aggravation. Yeah. He got out of it pretty quick. But that's our rating, folks. Do you agree? Let us know. Do you disagree? Don't let us know. Yeah, we don't want to hear about that. Actually, I, I would still like to hear about it. I think it'd be great. Agree or disagree, tell us all about it. If you don't like how we look, how we talk, how we speak, you know what? Keep those opinions to yourself. <laughs> we have enough insecurities as it is. It's true. Why do you think we drink when we post things on the internet? Well, it's not all for the leisure. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, Ramble On About Movies is also doing a rating of all of the Batman movies. Give it a listen. See what you think. Uh, see if their rating system lines up with yours. We're gonna... I, I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm gonna guess their number one is Dark Knight. And our number one is Superman 2. I don't know how those two would hold up. However, I do think that Superman 4 is much worse than Batman and Robin, which I can ha have to assume is their number, like their bottom spot. Yeah, their lowest rung. God, that movie is just the lowest of the low. Superman 4. Very bad film. Very, very bad. Don't even want to. Very bad movie. Yeah. Not even a film. At least it wasn't made to sell toys like Batman and Robin was. That is true. Oh, Thank guys. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, oh. It's like double dutch. You don't know when to jump in. Um, thank you very much for watching. Have a leisurely evening. And uh, I think we'll see you next time, right? Thanks for joining us. Have a good night. Leisure critics say what? Leisure critics, oh yeah. Food, booze, entertainment. They're leisurely critical, y'all, because LC is the way to be.